standing here on top of the Mount of Olives, you get a beautiful view of the old city of Jerusalem down below. The Mount of Olives is really a range of hills east of Jerusalem that is separated from the Temple Mount by the Kidron Valley. It is rarely mentioned in the Old Testament, but its connection with the closing scenes of Jesus' life is what gives it significance. Jesus rode over here on his triumphant entry into Jerusalem and stopped and wept as he looked down on the city. O oh, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chickens, but you would not. And then those fateful words, see your house is left unto you desolate. As Jesus uttered words that indicated the temple would be destroyed, the disciples came to him in Matthew chapter 24. Startled, they asked the question, tell us when will these things be and what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? In the minds of the disciples, an event so cataclysmic as the destruction of Jerusalem could not happen on its own without the end of the world happening as well. Jesus in his mercy described the signs of both events and blended them together as they could not countenance that the two events would be separated by 2,000 years. And so signs that indicated both events were then given to the disciples. The first sign given was that false Christs would arise and deceive many, and Jesus warned them to take heed. Prior to the destruction of Jerusalem, there were many false messiahs who arose, and prior to the end of the world, this sign will be prevalent again. Jesus went on to say that there will be wars and rumors of wars, that nation would rise against nation, and there will be famine, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Today we see all of the above taking place as we live in a world riddled with war and also we see earthquakes taking place with increased frequency and also in unusual places. Perhaps more fearful is when Jesus then said that many will betray one another. Throughout history, we have seen that persecution brings out the desire in humanity for self-preservation and Christians are not immune from this. Jesus then went on to describe the signs that would happen here in Jerusalem prior to its destruction in AD 70. And those who are watching were able to avoid the terrible destruction when it came at the hands of the Roman armies. Similar counsel is given prior to the return of Jesus. And those of us who are watching need not be fearful. Today we are seeing these events all around us, the unrest in the world all pointing to Jesus' return. We are seeing wars and rumors of wars. We are seeing economic crashes, famines, and earthquakes in diverse places. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man comes. Jesus' return is close and his counsel to the disciples rings true to us today. Take heed that no one deceive you. Endure until the end, watch and pray. But perhaps it's verse 14 of chapter 24 that is more important. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, then shall the end come. We are living close to Jesus' return and we are instructed to share this message with the world around us. May we be mindful of the events that are taking place. May we awake from spiritual sleep and may we lovingly share this message with the world around us that people may be saved.